Hi. I just want to do a short video here to show you how I do the graphics for my planes. Uh, normally I work with an airbrush, but you can use these same basic techniques for uh, just about any kind of stencil work that you want to do. And I'll show you a simple uh, way of doing it, you know, how, how to start off if you've never done it before. You don't need to use an airbrush again. You can use you know, spray cans, you can use even a brush with uh, you know, whatever kind of uh, poster paints or, or just about anything and get some, you know, some uh, pretty cool effects uh, pretty easily. What I do is I start off with a picture of the airplane and I like to use like uh, Photoshop or some photo editing uh, program and get like different views of it and then start by just hand drawing up, you know, on that printed picture what I'd like to do. You know, it's a couple of different ideas and look at them and see which one looks best. And sometimes I, I go straight to uh, making like a stencil or, a, or a, um, a pattern for a stencil. And what I did for this one, it's, a, uh, it's called a chubby cubby. And um, I wanted to do, um, I came up with an idea of doing flames. And I did a couple sketches for, for the guy that it's for, Larry. <laughs> Hi, Larry. And he wanted something a little more kind of rounded and cartoonish. So I went straight to construction paper and I cut out the flames and kind of tried to make them a little bit, you know, you know, cart cartoonish. <laughs> and uh, I came up with an idea of a little kind of sun figure on the side and I cut that out. Then I scanned them and from there I can change the shape and the size, you know, squish them down, make them longer, uh, the proportions. And I print those up and match the dimensions of the plane. And from there, I like to go straight to a stencil if I can. Uh, and what I'm using for a stencil lately, I've been using this, um, this is tint uh, for windows for, for cars or houses or whatever. And where I work, we, we tint windows. So there are always like pieces on the floor or in the garbage, you know, pretty large scraps. So if I see a nice big one, I'll grab it. And the, the lighter tint actually works better for this. Sometimes I do. Uh, talking about, you know, getting started, sometimes I'll do just a little sketch and then scan that. And after I scanned it and looked at it, I made it, you know, the size of a fit on paper. I thought it needed to be a little more narrow, so I squished it up a little bit. And then, you know, from that, I, I got this. And I got actually a couple different sizes, because I'm not sure exactly what size uh, Larry wants for his plane, or even if he wants to use it at all. So I just made it. Take my drawing. And I'll do the lightning bolts here. And put the tint down over. And I use uh, razor blades, one-sided razor blades. I get these at auto parts store. A whole box of them is about four bucks for a hundred. Uh, they go dull fairly fast, but uh, I guess I'm just used to using them. And I'll show you just quickly uh, a couple things you can do. If this was a, uh, if you like, you could just cut straight through the, the the tint onto the paper. An option is to use a. I always have one in my pocket. Yep. Yeah is to use a, a Sharpie and trace over it and then you can do a bunch at one time and have them all on one page if you like. An advantage to tracing it out with the uh, with the marker first is that you can refine your your drawing a little bit from that point. If you decided that you know maybe you think uh, it might look a little better if it's a little thinner, thicker, whatever, you can draw it out. And that way, too, you don't cut your original paper. I'm going to go ahead and cut some of these out here so you get an idea. And, you know, if you like, you can tape this down. If you've never done it before, you might want to secure the paper. And I just go a little bit past wherever I end. Of course, straight lines are going to be easier. And you just pop it out, and you have your have your stencil, and save the piece that you cut out because that can be used as a shield. There are a couple of advantages of using a thin film like this, and disadvantages too. An advantage is that you can take your 
your drawing or whatever, and you can change it around and move it and add things to it before you cut them out further and kind of edit as you go. The other thing advantage is that you can see underneath the first time you paint with it, if it's a one-shot deal anyway, you can see underneath so you can line it up on whatever's underneath so it looks the way you want it to look. If you, because you're probably going to be using several different stencils, not just one. You know, you're layering, layering them. Uh, and now, a, a disadvantage would be that it's a little thin and it's going to blow around a little bit. If you have too much pressure with your airbrush or with your paint gun, it's going to blow around. You have to use different techniques to hold it down. With the spray can, it's uh, well. I'll show you that later. There are things you can do to kind of uh, take care of that problem of it lifting off. But it, uh, probably the biggest advantage is because it's so thin, you can cut through and with a little practice. I'm not even cutting the paper, but I'm cutting all the way through the tint, and I'm not even. You can't even feel on the paper where I've cut. So not only do I have the original to hold on to, but uh, I have a, a very accurate um, stencil because I can do really round shapes where if I try to cut that out on the, directly on the paper, it would be all choppy and have little hairs of paper sticking out and wouldn't be nearly as accurate. You can never do this with paper go on a curve like this. In one continuous cut, you just couldn't do it with, with paper. You have to make short little cuts and and the round parts wouldn't be as nice. Although it would be more durable and, and easier to use, uh, it's just not as good in my opinion. It's pretty accurate to the original line. You're going to need to be able to move around when you're doing this. and uh, A couple ways you can do that if you don't have the space to, to totally walk around your work area, tape it onto a small board and then just keep turning the board. But like letters like this H, it's you know real wavy. Even though it's um, wavy like that, I can do the whole thing in almost one continuous cut all the way around. But if I have to stop to reposition or it's not not going exactly the way I like it to go, to find the line you're on again, it's kind of hard to see sometimes. But if you use your razor blade, you can feel where it is, and then start going. Now, if I need to change positions, or I'll leave the blade in and just change positions. That way you get more continuous cut. If you're doing a cut out of a shape or a uh, like a letter for example, the center of this B, uh, rather than trying to do uh, a cut out like a stencil type letter, uh, it looks a lot better if you just would paint the entire B, including a little circle, and then have a separate stencil for the, for the center to do the background color over top of the letter. That way you get a uh, you know more of a airbrush look instead of a you know a stencil look. Now if you're doing really small lettering, like these letter letters here are only about uh, an inch high at the most, and say for an example, and this could be on a larger letter too or shape, you make a mistake. My paper moved a little bit. I cut it you know it was a little bit off. You don't have to start over. The easiest way to fix it is just to well, pretty simple. Take a small piece of masking tape and tape the mistake back in place. Hopefully you didn't go all the way to cut it all the way off, but if you did, you can still fix it the same way. This is my stencil for the center of the bees, and since they're repeated twice in the word, and the stencil is going to be used more than once on the plane, I just put them both together, and that way you can do two.